After weeks of testing, I have no doubt the S95C is the best Samsung TV I've ever reviewed. But is that enough? Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I have spent weeks testing Samsung's latest and greatest. It's S95C Quantum Dot OLED TV. And this thing packs a ton of features that I'm gonna be diving into in this video. I'm gonna break it down in different sections from the design to the software, to the accessories, to picture quality. So use the chapter markers down below if there's a section that you care particularly about. Let's go ahead and start off with the design of the Samsung S95C QD OLED TV. Specifically, I've been testing out the Samsung S95C in the 77 inch size. There are other sizes available, but for my living room, the 77 fit just perfectly. It doesn't come in any small sizes, so you're pretty much looking at 55 and above for this design. The electronics giant has incorporated two newer technologies, at least newer to Samsung, and that's both Quantum Dot and OLED. Samsung for the longest time did not want to embrace OLED or Quantum Dot. We started to see a few of the newer TVs starting to incorporate these from Samsung, and this is definitely the best one that I have tested or checked out. Aside from the Quantum Dot OLED technology, what's also unique about the S95C is that Samsung has opted to put basically all of the guts into an external box. The One Connect box connects to the TV using a single silver 8-foot cable. This cable contains everything for the television, the audio, the video, and the power. This can be really convenient depending on your setup. You can tuck this box away inside of a you know, control center unit, inside of like a TV stand, whatever you want to do. And the 8-foot cable makes it really easy to put it a little bit further away. It's also ideal if you're planning to mount this on the wall. You can just fish that cable down and run into somewhere out of the way. So you just this really streamlined TV. I can see this as a great choice for mounting this on the wall. I mean, the whole thing ends up being only 11 millimeters thick, which is incredibly thin, plus it has super small bezels. There's even these ambient modes included with the software that gives it kind of this art look, so it's not the same as the frame TV that Samsung makes, but it still gives you this good ambient mode to go along with all the other smart features. Inside of that one connect box, there are several different inputs. There are four HDMI. These are HDMI 2.1 with HDCP 2.2. There's a pair of USB ports. There's optical digital audio output. There is an antenna input, and there is a mini jack that's used for service, as well as an ethernet LAN port. If you're like me and opt to put this just on a TV stand or a counter instead of mounting on the wall, Samsung includes a very minimalistic thin stand to go along with it. It's a central stand, so it goes in the middle instead of a two-part design on the left and the right, so just right in the center. It's kind of like an L shape going on, and it's actually two different pieces. This thing is so slim and so small, it's in two pieces to make it even fit in the box. I mean, especially on the 77-inch side, you need a good sturdy base, and this thing didn't feel like it was moving at all. It felt very sturdy, it felt very safe when it was installed, though there was no way I was doing it myself, and I I for sure had to have some professionals take this and put it up because one person, not going to happen. Included with the TV is what they call the Solar Cell Remote. This is a newer version of Samsung's remote and it's smaller than in years past. It's got a plasticky design instead of silver but has a couple cool features. So it can be powered up over USB-C. No need to worry about bringing along some AAA or AA batteries. But beyond USB-C, there's also a solar panel on the back. Just place this into the sun somewhere and you can charge up just using the natural light never having to worry about plugging it in. I think this is a great design and a great choice for using solar technology. They've used this in the past, and I think it is just beyond cool, especially for a TV that performs so well in bright light. More on that in a moment. It just makes a lot of sense. So for my living room, we got sun coming in, place it on your, you know, table, charge it up, good to go. Other than that, small, light remote, there's shortcut button at the bottom, really easy to use and control. Let's talk about the software running the Samsung S95C TV. Samsung is still using its Tizen OS to run televisions, which is a bit hit or miss for me. I have it in a couple other TVs in the house, including their projectors, and honestly, my biggest thing with it, it just seems a little confusing. Just navigating seems a little confusing, and that has not been cleared up. I do have hope for in the future, because if people like me keep saying it's confusing long enough, maybe Samsung will uh, put out some new software updates to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Another dislike with the Tizen OS is that there are ads in here. So as you pull up the different menus, there are a bunch of ads to jump to different places. Honestly, I just want to be able to move between my inputs and the smart features and use something like my Apple TV. But if you are streaming with the native OS, that's fine. I still just don't necessarily want to see all the ads before I jump into the individual streaming services. Like prior Samsung TVs, this does have a gaming hub, so you can jump into streaming services like Xbox Game Pass, Nvidia GeForce Now, and Amazon Luna. Personally, 
I'm not gonna really use these as much. I'm just gonna use a proper gaming console. I'm gonna connect my PS5 and go that route, but it is kind of nice that they have this built-in gaming mode, automatic switches to like the gaming mode for the picture quality, all that stuff. It's really handy to have it. You can pair a controller directly with the TV. It's cool, but it's probably just not for me. On a set this high end, I'm just gonna use a dedicated device. If you'd like to control the TV with your voice, you do have two different options. You can use Amazon's Assistant as well as Samsung's Bigsby. Google Assistant is not an option on this TV, so if that's your, you know, assistant of choice, sorry, you're a bit out of luck here. They're really kind of trying to push people if you're going to use Android into as Bigsby OS and people who are using Samsung phones. But if you do not use a Samsung phone, don't worry, you're not left out in the cold completely. This thing still uses SmartThings, so you can use the SmartThings app on your iPhone or your iPad and control it that way. I do have several SmartThings devices in my home. Our fridge is SmartThings, our washer and dryer is SmartThings, another TV in there, and it's really handy. So I do connect this to SmartThings and I can get alerts for things like my washer being done or the fridge door being left open right there on the TV. It's pretty cool and I'm excited to have SmartThings at least incorporated in it and I can control my phone if I don't happen to have the remote nearby. For Apple users, yes, it does support Apple AirPlay, though not full HomeKit like some other smart TVs. For me, that's a little bit of a downside. How's the audio on the Samsung S95C? The biggest thing I can say about it is it's above average by far. It's some of the best sounding audio I've ever heard come out of a stock TV driver. And Samsung is even advertising things like Dolby Atmos support here so you can get that kind of tailored 3D audio depending on where you are in the room. Honestly, it sounds really good but probably still not as good as a dedicated sound system or sound bar. Samsung is even advertising that you use this with its own sound bar to boost audio property. So if they're kind of telling you buy their sound bar, you should know that getting a sound bar or a sound system is going to be the way to go. Especially on a high-end TV like this, I'm not gonna wanna use the default drivers that are in there. They're just not gonna be as powerful as a dedicated system. And that's just kind of where I'm at. I didn't try it with the Samsung soundbar, but I did eventually just move over to my Sonos system. I'm a big Sonos guy, so I have my Sonos Arc, dedicated sub, and some mirrors to give you that more 3D effect. It just sounds better than what's coming out of the TV. Still above average for the TV, but not nearly enough to replace an actual dedicated sound system. And I don't think it ever will. Now the part that I'm most excited for, and that's the video quality and picture quality. Samsung has done an excellent job here, and over the course of my time testing this TV, I threw a lot of stuff at it. I mean, photos from my phone, gaming with my PlayStation 5, uh, watching TV, tons of movies, lots of stuff. And every single time, I was impressed. This is definitely the best looking Samsung TV that I've ever reviewed. And the two things that really spoke to me were the brightness and the amount of color saturation and HDR effects that this TV had. Now this is in our living room and I technically have kind of glares coming in. And with my old TV, this was constantly a problem. If coming through the slanted windows, hit that TV, and if you were in certain spots in the room, it's kind of hard to see. I never had that problem with this TV. It always was able to overpower that light and allowed me to see the TV just fine. And when I moved back and was trying to use my old TV again, there was a huge difference. The old TV looked dull and very dim in comparison. Like seriously, it looks kind of awful. And my old TV was a very nice one. It's like a $2,000 set. It may only two years old and yet it still looked like crap compared to the new Samsung S95C. It was just kind of a night and day difference. And I don't mean, I guess I kind of do, of brightness and darkness. A couple of things that I was looking out for was I wanted to see how the saturation was in the colors, if it was too much and it felt like unrealistic. And I also wanted to watch out for things like blooming and the black levels and stuff like that. So I watched a lot of things that had very dark parts to them, uh, like John Wick. I even pulled up some new movies like the new Fast and Furious, uh, Fast X. There's also the new Guardians of the Galaxy I just recently watched on there. And it was amazing. I saw pretty much no blooming at all. Like the black levels were completely near black in a dark room. It just looked spectacular, but still looked good in a bright room too. Sometimes the colors did look a little oversaturated, maybe a little unrealistic, but it also made it look more fun and just like visually pleasing to your eye because it was just so bright and pretty looking. I, I really loved it. Watching Apple's documentary series with Paul Rudd, um, with all the tiny animals, it would just everything popped so well. It was one of my favorite examples of like HDR and 4K, just brilliant content, because everything just looked so amazing in that documentary, and it really shined on the new Samsung S95C. Now the set doesn't have Dolby Vision, which is a downside for me. I think Dolby Vision is going to be better than HDR10 and HDR10+, but Samsung is kind of the creator behind HDR10 and 10+, so they are performing better in this category than competing TVs that opt to use these with weaker specs. It definitely did a good job. HDR was fantastic. I think Dolby Vision will be better, but there's just no way Samsung's ever gonna do it. HDR stuff is great here, just, 
I want the Dolby Vision, maybe just because of a name thing, but I don't know. It looked great either way, that's all I can say. So what does it come down to? Is this TV worth shelling out the money for? I mean, this is a several thousand dollar TV, especially the 77 inch size. You can probably find cheaper TVs that look near as good. I mean, for the money, the LG G3, I checked this out earlier this year, and I think that might beat this one a little bit in terms of picture quality because it's a little bit brighter. Um, but honestly, I, I really like the Samsung. I like how everything works. I like the SmartThings functionality. And I've had problems with the LG operating system at times in the past. So for me, I think I would pick the Samsung, even if it is a little bit more expensive than the LG G3. The one thing I really like about the LG though is it does have an anti-reflective screen compared to Samsung. So it's got the edge there for me. I wish Samsung would do a little bit more like that, but we know they have anti-reflective screens because I've seen the new versions of the frame and they look incredible. They, they literally look like painted pieces of art when they're in that ambient mode with the artwork on there. It's kind of nuts. I want to touch it and feel the brush strokes and yet I know I can't because it's just a really matte display that looks amazing. But we're not talking about that TV here. Going back to the S95C, I, this is for sure the best Samsung TV that I've tested. I think it may be worth the money, but for most people, you can probably find a cheaper TV that's close. Samsung and others have features or TVs that are very similar to this, but they don't have things like the one connect box with the external plugs and everything, um, but similar visual performance. But if you're willing to spend the money, I don't think this is a bad set at all. I think you'd be very happy picking this up for your home. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Check me out on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. I've got a lot more videos coming your way.